guys um we're gonna do a uh new little video um maybe we'll try to do more of these throughout the year uh, kind of like a, a t spotlight um so we're going to focus on a, a transfer that's going to get rehoused today and i'll give you some facts now this all this information is stuff that i looked up um it's not something that i was born knowing i had to do a little bit of research this morning to make sure that the information was uh correct uh, this is the Brachypelma shore dairy. Let's see, we'll move the new enclosure off to the side. There's the little one right there. Um, well, so we're moving them from that into that. Higher, deeper, um, more room to move. The uh, common name, oops, didn't put that on there right. Common name for this spider is the Mexican black velvet. Um, now, what I read about the spider itself is just, it's, they're a basic black brachypelma species. Um, they will dig uh, if given the opportunity to. This one never did, but it, it really didn't have a ton of substrate. It just likes to wander. So that's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, I def definitely settled on this guy in this enclosure. They're slow growing, just like every other brachypelma species out there, um, barring the Vagans and elbow pelosum. I think those two grow a little quicker than the other ones do uh, out of the ones that I have anyway but Anyway They're from the southern Pacific side of Mexico. Okay, so the information that you'll get now is um, basic habitat Information from where exactly they're from. They're from a place called the O Oaxaca I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's O-A-X-A-C-A -A -A Valley uh, or the state of Oaxaca in southern like i said southern pacific mexico way down is you know the part of mexico where it starts to turn there to the bottom towards panama and all those uh central american countries down there it's a very dry uh forestry foresty scrubland kind of an area a lot of dirt gravel um but they do get roughly around uh, 31 and a half inches of rain a year mostly between what it looked like to me if I read the graphs correctly between May and September Are the areas that they get most of their rain they get zero snowfall as can be expected down there um, And their their temperatures I'm gonna give you their average temperature. There's about 70 to 72 degrees They have the minimum and the maximum temperatures and the minimum temperatures roughly are in the I think the, the mid 40s roughly as as a low for so like for, for a year, year average, that, that lowest temperature would be around 40, 45 degrees. And then the high temperatures are, you know, roughly around 80 to 85 degrees. So around 70 to 72 degrees is about average, the average normal ambient temperature for that area. And the humidity levels, depending on the time of the year, uh, range between 35 to 75%. And of course, that coincides with the months that has more rain. I looked up today the temperature where they're at right now in Mexico is 59 degrees with 39% humidity. So even though you read, again, we'll, we'll just touch on the care sheets. Even though you read the care sheets and you'll see, when I read the care sheet, which I did today to compare, the care sheet said to keep between 70 and 85% humidity and temperatures between 70 and 85 degrees. Well, maybe that was wrong. Wait a second, hold on. Temperatures between 70 and 85 degrees, temp or humidity between 60 and 75%. So if you follow that and you're trying to worry about your humidity level on a daily basis of 60 to 75%, but then you look at the temperatures today, it's only 39% humidity. So this is why I, I harp on humidity with people, that the humidity level changes constantly throughout the year. And the, the, the numbers that you're getting on care sheets are generally going to be an average or high end of that spectrum. So if you really want to know about the species that you keep, go on, find where they're from, where they're located from, and then look at the temperatures and humidity levels on a daily basis and see what they are and how they change. Now, tonight, that temperature of um, 59 degrees could go down to 40 you know, and people are so worried about the winter temperatures with their tarantulas right now. And they just, you know, they, they don't get that. Yes, um, keeping them warm is better, but they will be okay in cooler temperatures for short periods of time. So what I'm going to try to do is show you guys what I'm going to put in here and then uh, get it set up. 
and then try to get this guy over here with as little as stress as possible. Um, I'm not sure if I'm just going to hold the enclosure next to it and just kind of coax them in or, you know, I have the handy dandy transfer vial and catch cup ready. But uh, this is what we're going to put in the enclosure. So what I did is I used potting soil and then the other side is cocoa fiber. And we're going to put more uh, substrate in here, but I want to get the, uh, the hide put in. And then we'll, we'll add, I want this side to be higher and this side to be lower. Hit the wrong button on the, uh, the camera there. So anyway, uh, this, the, the dirt's all inside here. Um, of course, it's a little cooler here in my neck of the woods. It's been, you know, uh, down to four degrees and high of 12 to 14 degrees the last few days. And the floor's got a little bit of a draft. Uh, so there's there's little cool spots here and there. So this this potting soil is is actually damp um, from collecting you know being cool and then warm and then cool and then warm. It's actually got condensation in it. It's got a little bit of moisture. So what I want to do is we're going to take this is a just a piece of cork bark, um, almost like a hut almost. We're going to kind of get it down here in the corner. Dig this out a little bit. Spread some of this cocoa fiber over on this side. Okay, now that'll give him an area that he could go in and dig back farther down if he wants to, or she, that is, either way. I don't know what we have here. And then we have, I have some plants here that are a little flowery. Um, It'll kind of set off the black of, of the spider. And then I have some pieces of bark that we're just going to put in here to kind of replicate, um, you know, a, a, a forestry area that may have lost some bark on trees and, it, you know, kind of set them up in here a certain way. And then, of course, the handy dandy Gatorade water dish. So let me get that stuff set up and then I'll bring you guys back. Um, I want to put uh, reptile soil over top of it so we have the black on top like I like I have been doing on the last set of tarantulas um, I kind of like the look of it so we're gonna go that way and then we'll get him in here or her okay so there is the uh, finished product uh, the only thing left to do is get water in the water dish and get the spider in there um, that one's a tad bit skittish so we're gonna try and uh, what I'll do is I'll hold the enclosure back here and try and coax him in this way um, and then we'll have the old catch cups ready. So what I'm going to do is clip the microphone somewhere else instead of on me in case I do have to move quick to get him. Uh, so we'll try and clip it up top here and, uh, you guys should still be able to hear me without any issues. Okay. I'm going to pause you, get him, get water in there and then get this little guy transferred. Okay. So water's in. Let's hope this guy goes in without too much of a problem. We're going to have to take out... I think he's trying to flick hair and he really doesn't have any hair left to flick. He, he came in kind of pretty much bald as it was. So let's see. Nice and easy, buddy. It's okay. It's a bigger home for you. Come on. This way. There you go. Come on. Keep going. Oh, you don't want to go back down. Trust me, it's a good place. Rent free, I promise. Come on. Well, you just don't want to go, do you? Okay, you're almost there. We can just get your feet off of your old place. There you go. He's putting silk down as he goes. I hope that was all visible for you. So that was pretty painstakingly, or painless, not painstaking, because that would be saying that it was painful. Um, what I like to do with my Brachypoma species, and I encourage you to do this uh, with yours as well um, depending on 
the amount of dirt that you put in there. I know a lot of people will go and get the bricks of dirt and then they put a, you know, three, four inch brachypalma into a 10 gallon aquarium and the substrate levels only, you know, a quarter of the way up. Um, I highly encourage with brachypalma species that you really, really pack the dirt down. It seems like they do better with what I would say is stable footing, like the ground is more stable for them. If it's loose, they seem to do this. They seem to stay on the side. Now, of course, he's going to be like that because this is something new for him. Um, matter of fact, we're going to get rid of this right now. This is a new enclosure for him, a little different substrate. Um, well, really only the top level. Very, very s slow or, yeah, a little... Uh, the top, just the top layer is the uh, reptile soil. So he'll get used to it pretty quickly. Um, he ate the other day, or she ate the other day. I haven't uh, really looked ventrally at this spider at all. Um, hoping this is a, a girl. Uh, they get they get beautiful black velvety, just like the Gramostola pulchra. I just don't know if they get as big and bulky, but they sure they sure look like it. I just watched a quick video of Austin Spears uh, pairing his mature female and the mature male together of this species. So they look pretty much close to what a gramostola pulchra does so that's that um again i don't i don't really worry about temperatures and humidity uh, because i come from an area that's that's got a good bit of a, of humidity so i don't ever really worry about that and i know some people uh don't like that i harp on humidity because everybody wants to try and do what they feel is best for their spiders and that's fine and dandy but like i said go go look up where they're from and just go online and type in you know the average rainfall or average weather for that area and it'll give you today's temperatures highs and lows and you know precipitation just like you would look up your own weather um, and you could kind of see i was actually kind of shocked to see it was only 59 degrees there so you know in my room right now we're it's probably 70 71 72 degrees in here so they're perfectly content and i've been worried for a while that you know it's been too chilly in here but they seem to be okay so one quick uh, last thing I want to do is give, let me put the, uh, the lid on, if I knew where I put the lid. How do I always lose the lids for these things? Okay, hold on a second. Okay, I found it. Um, let me clean it off real quick. This was the enclosure that the uh, mature male Dolichotheli diamantinensis was in, by the way. And uh, thanks to anybody that commented on which of the two spiders that I should move. Um, I was leery about moving my albiceps just because it, it was very inactive. It wasn't moving around a lot and it hadn't eaten since I got it in, I got these two together, and these two came in the same time that I got that first Afana Palma Moderatum, the one that um, died because it ruptured its abdomen, getting caught on a piece of sharp bark. Um, I got them all at the same time, so I think it was like July 7th, roughly, when I got these. So that Brachypalma Elbicep hadn't eaten in six months, and I threw a cricket in there yesterday or the day before just seeing if it would eat. And it actually ate. I was I was actually shocked. So when I move the brachypelma albopelosum female uh, out of this type of enclosure, then I'll move that albiceps into the other one. Um, I said I'm gonna my my main focus. Not that I don't. I mean I have a bunch of spiders that I like, but I want to make sure that my brachypelma species have nice clear acrylic enclosures, um, so that we can see them real well. You know their colorings are just. I like the colorings, the reds, the blacks, the oranges go together so well. And of course I am infatuated with totally black spiders. So, okay, so enough of this guy. We're going to put the lid on him, but I wanted to do a quick, you know, now he's going to be in the water, a quick shout out. I was a guy I was talking to, I've, I've watched his videos before. I think we started our channels pretty much roughly the same time. He might've been around a little bit longer than me. Both of us uh, got started because of Dave Scott. I hope Dave comes back again. Um, we both kind of started doing videos because of him. Um, and he hasn't done videos in a long time. He's actually doing one today because I kind of talked him into it. Well, I didn't really talk him into it, but I kind of coaxed him into it. Uh, so, so go go to his channel. Uh, this is his name. 
So go on YouTube, look up Jay Adams, go go subscribe to his channel. He's got some good content for the videos that he has. Uh, he's a real stand-up super guy. Uh, he's a moderator over at Tarantula Gossip. So um, check that out. And while you're over there, take a, take a look at the uh, the photo, the group photo now. Cheeto's on there. I know I said that before, but um, it looks real nice. Um, she looks real nice on, on, on the header of a, of a group. So we'll do some updates on the... Uh, the Brachypalma shorderi. Oh, and I never named this spider. Um, I, di I hadn't given it a name. I couldn't figure out what's name. I I kicked around the name Omen for a while because it, you know it's going to be black. But so I, I just went online today and I typed in Black Velvet, and of course the song from Alana Miles came on Black Velvet. So I decided to name this spider Miles. So I suppose if it turns out to be a girl, Miles could still be okay. Um, I don't want to call it Miley, but we could. So we're going to name this guy Miles in honor of uh, Alana Miles' song, Black Velvet. And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. And don't forget to check out Jay and look forward to some new stuff coming up. I did a couple um, updates on a couple spiders that molted. And uh, those will be coming up real soon. So have a great day. Talk to you guys later. Don't forget to hit the like, comment down below. See you guys later.